Hi everyone and welcome to Deakin College. Today's presentation will be regarding our foundation program. However, before we do get started, just like to go over a little bit of housekeeping. Um, today we do have some panelists on board to assist you with your questions throughout the presentation. So if you do have a question, you can put this in either the chat function or the Q&A. Some questions we may leave until the end so that we can answer them live. And we do have an open uh, question and answer time uh, available at the end of this presentation. So if you do wish to hold on to your questions to the end, we will allow some time for them to be answered. Um, but I won't hold you up any longer. Um, I will pass over to Chanel, who is our academic coordinator um, for the foundation program at Deakin College. So over to you, Chanel. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. How are we all doing today? Good. All right. I can see some thumbs up, so that's good. Um, I'll just get my video going as well so that you guys can see me if you need. Um, all right. So welcome to today's new student webinar for the Foundation Program. As Dan said, my name is Chanel Luduwana, and I'm the academic coordinator for this program. Um, so we're going to go through a few things today. Um, thanks, Dan. Uh, we're going to have a look at the foundation program in a bit of depth. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about studying online at Deakin College and what that's like. Um, and we'll also go through some of the units within the foundation program, as well as recommendations for unit selection. Um, and then, as mentioned, we'll go through some frequently asked questions. And if you have any other questions, please pop them into the chat and we'll answer them afterwards um, at, after today's presentation. Okay. So first of all, what is the foundation program? Um, I think the best way to remember this or to think about the foundation program is that it is a year 12 equivalent program. Thanks. Um, and we actually have two different um, pathways or streams or cohorts. It's the easiest way to think of it within the program. So we have the standard track or the students who are doing the standard program, which um, generally, which consists of eight units. Um, and we also have the extended program, which consists of 12 units. Um, in terms of how long that takes, I'll cover that in the next few slides. But um, just so that you're aware, we also have the program delivered at four different locations. So the foundation program is delivered at our Burwood campus. Um, it's also delivered at our waterfront campus, which is in Geelong. Um, and we also offer the program in Jakarta. And we've partnered with the school in Hailiang, China. And we offer the program through there as well. So the, the program is designed, the foundation program at Deakin College, is designed to get you into your desired pathway at Deakin University, no matter what that is. All right, so we've, we've designed it so that you can get into your desired pathways. All right, so what's the structure of the program? Now, in the previous slide, I mentioned the foundation standard and foundation extended. Um, so for the standard program structure, I'll go through that first. As I said, there are eight total units that you need to complete, right? Now, within these eight units, there are four core or required units and four elective units. Elective units are units that you can choose um, in, in your various interests or areas of study, um, and that will give you a, a bit more um, subject or topic knowledge towards your destination degrees whereas the core units are the units that every student has to complete regardless of what they're going into. And the time frame to complete the standard program, um, if a student is taking a full-time study load, is eight months. Okay, so two trimesters. The extended program has 12 units for completion. So there's an additional four units from the standard, and there are eight core units. Um, and there are also four electives. Now, the main difference between the standard and extended program is that the extended program takes an extra trimester of study, which is usually a 12-month study period if students are doing a full-time study load. Okay. So what is our goals and objectives? Why, you know, why do I coordinate the foundation program? The main purpose of this program is to deliver high-quality foundation studies a program which meets the national standards of Australia, make sure that all of you studying within the program are capable and able and well-equipped to go into university, first year university, and continue as strong undergraduate students, all right? 
This program focuses on the development of your academic skills, so whether that's in English, as well as your other um, subject area skills, which is required for further studies. Right? And the way that the program is designed is really to provide you with a supportive, engaging, and interactive learning environment. So you'll find a lot less of um, lecturing and a lot less of teacher-driven stuff. It's a lot more student-driven. You know, the onus is on you as students to, to create your own work, to do your own assessments, to work and collaborate with others, and to really develop your skills so that you're ready for university. All right. So if you're studying in the foundation program, now normally um, a full-time study load at Deakin College for foundation students is a maximum of four units in each trimester. So that's why in the previous slides I said that a student doing a standard foundation program would finish the course in eight months because they do four units in their first trimester in the first four months and four units in their second trimester. Now our recommendation or my recommendation is that you do enroll in four units so that you can get to Deakin University as soon as possible, all right, um, within your uh, desired time frame. However, there is the possibility for you to do less than four units, and, and you can have a chat with me about that further. If you want. Um, the core units in the program are the units that you must complete. Now, these are the core units, all right? So for the standard program, like I said, there are those four core units which you have to do, which is advanced academic communication, intercultural studies, IT, and advanced academic writing and research. Um, we're also trying to include mathematics into this core unit because we want to make sure, or this is general essential mathematics, just because we want to make sure that students who are going into university are comfortable with their maths ability, um, which is something that you actually need for all of your degrees. So whether you're going into business or nursing or science or health, some foundation mathematics is also required. Um, with, for the extended students, there are an additional three units that you have to complete. Um, which is your introduction to academic communications, introduction to academic writing, and your computer skills. These are prerequisites for the standard units. So the extended students would complete those three plus the standard core units, whereas the students doing the standard program would only complete those standard units on the left-hand side of the screen. Okay, and those units are advanced academic communication, intercultural studies, IT, and advanced academic writing and research. Um, I'll explain these units in the coming slides. All right, now I also said that we have a large number of electives and this list of electives is changing. Um, some units are being added and some units are being removed. Um, we're coming up with new electives all the time. So you might see some units added there that you thought, oh, that's really interesting. I might take that this trimester but this is our existing list of elective units. Um, you can see there that there are units that cover every area of study. So if you're going into arts, you might wanna pick society and culture, you might wanna do law, you might wanna do media or mass communications. If you're going into business, you might wanna do accounting, economics, management, marketing. Um, you might even wanna do like a higher level maths unit. If you're going into nursing or science, you might wanna do you know, your physics, biology, human bio, chem, any of these options. Essentially, the electives are open in that you can choose what you're interested in. And if you really wanna choose something that you know, may not be the most relevant to your, to your um, future uh, degree, but you're interested in studying it, I'm okay with you doing that. So as long as you have a chat with me first, okay? So there are options for you to be flexible in your electives as well. All right. So why should you choose the foundation program at Deakin College? The first reason, which is probably the most important reason, is that it opens doors to many possibilities. Uh, in the coming slides, I'll talk about where the program can take you, but it essentially opens the door to Deakin University for you, right? Students who do well in foundation can go straight into Deakin Uni. The program is also fundamentally focused on 21st century skill development. Now, what we're talking about here are the skills that you're going to need, not just for today, but for the future. Um, and that's when you're in the workforce and when you're completing your assignments at university. Um, creative and innovative teaching practices. So uh, our teachers are really, really well versed in technology. 
um, and also um, a lot of different um, a lot of different techniques and exercises and activities that makes learning more engaging. All right. Um, we also have recognition at Deakin University. So like I said, your results at the foundation program is recognized by Deakin Uni. Um, and we have a diverse teaching team with a lot of different experiences, which I have a slide about coming up. The main thing, the main reason, another important reason as to why you should take the foundation program is that it fast tracks your study. So you can essentially go from year 12 into university within eight months, all right, rather than having to do a full year. All right. So like I said, our teachers come from a diverse range of expertise and backgrounds. Um, we currently have within the foundation program current university lecturers and tutors. So some of the teachers in my program teach currently at Deakin University. All right, so that's very valuable for you because if you want to go into university, you have a person that you can talk to directly and find out what the gap is and try and bridge that gap. We also have teachers who are secondary school teachers or former secondary school teachers who have been excellent in their field. Um, we've got subject area leaders with a lot of knowledge and we also have industry specialists. So we have current teachers who either formerly or currently work in um, the industry. So in marketing, film and PR and communications, we have current engineers teaching in the unit in the program and we have current lawyers, current lawyers and scientists teaching in the program. So there's a lot of experience there and they're all looking to share their experiences with you. So where can you go from the foundation program? So these are the pathways from it. There's really three possible pathways. All right. Um, and the next slide will explain this in a little bit of detail. But the first pathway, and this is based on your offer letter, is for you to go directly from foundation into Deakin University. And some of you guys will get that in your letter of offer. It'll say, upon completion of the foundation program, your next course is the Bachelor of International Studies at Deakin University. Okay. Some of you will get an offer letter that allows you to go from the foundation program into the diploma at Deakin College, so your first year of university as a diploma, and into your second year at Deakin University. Okay, now a little catch here if you do extremely well in the foundation program, now that's to say if you get averages above 70, and if you score above 70 or 75 for your English units, Deakin University will accept you directly from the foundation program, skipping the diploma. All right, now that's a real um, carrot for the students. It's something that excites a lot of students and they really try hard to get really good results so that they can skip the diploma and go directly into first year university. That opportunity is available to all students. Okay, so it's, it's on you. It's how well you do will allow you to get straight into university and skip the diploma. So where can you go from the foundation program? So these are our guaranteed pathways um, at the Deakin College. So any student who finishes the foundation program is guaranteed entry into a diploma at Deakin College. Um, so that's the Diploma of Business, Commerce, Communication, Construction Management, Design, Engineering, Film, TV, Animation, Health, Sciences, IT, and Science. Now, for a couple of them, for the Diploma of Construction Management and Diploma of Engineering, there are maths requirements, so you do need to do higher level maths units. But apart from that, for any of the other courses, completing the foundation program makes you eligible to enter that diploma. Why is that a good thing? Some students start off wanting to study business and commerce, or commerce, right? Um, I, I meet with a lot of students who are like this. And I ask them, what do you want to do when you finish foundation and when you finish a diploma? Oh, I want to be an accountant. Fantastic. Four months in, hi Chanel, I don't want to be an accountant anymore. Actually, I want to go and study design. I'm interested in fashion now. Fantastic. Do you have to take your subjects all over again? Do you have to change what you studied all over again? Nope. All right, if you're going from a diploma into a diploma, if you're switching from a diploma of commerce into a diploma of design, 
you completing the foundation program automatically makes you eligible for that other diploma. All right, the only ones that are tricky is engineering and construction where you have to have done math units. Okay, so that's a good thing to know as well. If you're uncertain, it's a really good pathway. We also have guaranteed pathways into first year Deakin Uni. So these are um, the courses at Deakin University that accept our students. Uh, and this will be usually on your offer letter. So after finishing the foundation program, you can get straight into the Bachelor of Arts, Psychology, Creative Writing, all of these, social work, um, health and physical education, nursing, IT, uh, in international studies, all of these things. But remember, in order to get into Deakin University, you have to get strong average mark, which means your, your average of grades across the two trimesters or three trimesters, as well as strong English language results. And that's in those two core units, um, which I, I touched on before, but we'll look at in a minute, um, your advanced academic communication and your advanced academic writing and research. So what's the interesting thing about this? Even if your original offer letter was for you to go from Deakin College Foundation into a diploma into second year of bachelor, right? Let's say that you got really strong average marks and good English scores. You decided that you wanted to change from um, a Bachelor of Design into a Bachelor of Criminology. If you have the entry requirements, if you have met the entry requirements, you can go straight into this pathway and skip the diploma. All right, there are students who decide to do this. So that's another benefit for you as students is that there is that ability for you to jump straight into university upon completing the foundation program. All right, um, so this was again looking at that image, the optional pathways, which I think I already touched on. Um, if you get the average mark and English language results, you can skip the diploma and go straight into the foundation program. Now, if you want to know the entry requirements, this can be found on our website. Right? And you can look at what scores you need to get, what average marks you need to get, as well as what English results you need to get in order to be able to get into your desired bachelor program. Okay, now a question that I get asked from students is, What's it like studying online at Deakin College? Uh, and what's it like studying online in the foundation program? So the first thing is, the first and most important thing probably is accessing your classes. Um, we use an online platform called Zoom, which I'm sure many of you uh, are aware of or have heard of or have used in order to conduct our classes at the moment, okay? Um, so, the way that this works is your teacher will post Zoom links on our learning system, which is called Moodle. Any students who've, um, some of you might have already used Moodle at your school. Um, you might have used Blackboard or, I'm trying to think of the other ones, Canvas. All of these are kind of the same thing. It's basically your uh, learning environment. Now on that, your teachers will post your specific link and only the students in your class can see your link. All right. And when you click on your link at your scheduled time, your class will open up and your teacher will be there. So for example, if you are enrolled in English class, class one, Monday at 3.30, if you click the link on Monday at 3.30, you'll be taken to your class. You'll see all of your students, other students, and you'll see your teacher there. If you try to go into that class at other times, there won't be anyone there, okay? Um, studying online, we've also had to change some of our assessments and exams so that they work within the online environment. And me and your teachers spent quite a bit of time working on these to make sure that they are fully developed and designed for flexible study, all right, so for online study. Um, now, your assessments within your units can vary between your units. Um, they can be presentations, they can be video submissions, they can be interviews and panel discussions essays, tests, and of course, group assignments. And all of these things are done within that Zoom environment and other platforms that are available for you to do from home, okay? So we, we try to make sure that that experience of you being able to work with your peers or submit videos and do all of these other things are not impacted at all simply by being online. 
your final exams are also conducted online and they're usually done as either a quiz or as an extended assignment or as a downloadable exam paper, which you need to complete and submit within a given period of time. Now, in order to make sure that you all do as best as you can or as well as you can, we have a tremendous support network, guys. Um, it's not just myself and your teachers that are here. Um, there are a lot of other people at Deakin College who, whose aim is to help you succeed. Now, some of these people, and this isn't everybody, but we've got some of these people on screen, your learning advisors are the four staff members at the top of your screen. All right, um, their job is to basically help you organize yourself and help you with academic issues that'll pop up and make sure that you can manage your study load and your other commitments. We also have a lot of student volunteers. So current students, past students, who are here to help you succeed, okay? And these are our student mentors, um, our various um, student organizations, like our student committee, all right, a lot of these people are here to, to support you. And you'll learn all about this once you, you know, go through orientation. So I'm not gonna bore you with too much information. There's a lot of support available. Oh, sorry, Dan, I just remembered one thing about the previous slide. Some of you coming into study at foundation might be under the age of 18. Um, so if that's you, we actually have a dedicated team of under 18 guardians, okay, who can assist you with things like finding accommodation when you eventually do come here. Um, they can help you with, you know, specific queries that you might have. And they'll also meet with you quite frequently, all right? They'll schedule times to meet with you to make sure that you're tracking okay and get you extra help where you need it. Thanks. Okay. So for those of you who are looking to enroll in October, um, if you wanna just take note of these, um, these are the units that I would recommend uh, that you enroll in. But also remember, um, once you accept your offer, you'll be given a course guide and the course guide will have these units written down for you as well as a course map, so it's a little bit clearer, okay? So for students going into the standard track, there are four units that I would recommend that you enroll in, and this is if you're gonna undertake a full-time study load, all right? So the first one is uh, Advanced Academic Communications, which is a core unit. Um, you have to do this unit before you can do your advanced academic writing and research, all right? So if you are going to do less than four units, that is the unit that you must do this trimester, regardless, okay? The other unit you should do is intercultural studies, which is another core unit. And then you should also select IT, information technology, which is another core unit. And as I said, I would strongly recommend that you choose essential mathematics, all right? It's a, it's a unit that um, is very good for you to do. It's easy maths, it's here, you know, 11 maths. If you can't do that, then I'd be worried about you being able to be a nurse, for example. So you should really um, think about choosing that as well. Um, and the other unit I've got there is an academic integrity unit, which is a requirement for all foundation students. Um, it's a subject that is not done over 12 weeks. It's just something that you do in your own time. Probably takes about four hours of your time. You can do it over the weekend, but it really helps you with your assessments going forward. So just going through these units, just giving you a little bit of information on them. Advanced academic communication skills is a unit that builds linguistic and tactical skills for participation in academic contexts. So this is where you would need to use your communication skills in an academic setting. So think about things like class presentations, um, uh, webinars, group assessments, a lot of situations where you are required to use your communication skills. Uh, and, and we really look at developing your abilities in, these area, in, in this area. So it's really looking at enabling you to actively and eff effectively take part in lectures and tutorials um, and to collaborate with others. I think from memory in this assessment, there are listening tests, there are um, presentations, and I think the final assessment is a one-on-one -on -one interview, like a job interview between yourself and a panel of, well, your teacher and a panel of presenters. Thank you. 
The next unit, which is the core, a core unit as well, is intercultural studies. Um, so this is a unit that is quite unique um, to our program um, in that it is, it is a unit that familiarizes yourself with the multicultural environment in Australia. Um, and we go through a lot of different things like Australian values and beliefs, and we kind of compare that to your own values and beliefs, and we try to find a little bit of a harmony in between them. And the main reason, I really like this unit, the main reason why this unit exists is to give students that cultural identity in Australia because it's a foreign country for you. So we wanna make sure that when, whilst you're here, you know, you're able to understand your identity, but also understand the wider Australian identity and fit within it. Um, again, this is a really interesting uh, unit with interesting assessments, which range from presentations to online activities, assess assignments, the whole lot. Okay, so there's a lot of different things going on. Okay, IT. IT is also a required core unit. Um, this is probably a unit that a lot of students say, oh, why do I have to take IT? I'm going to study business. Um, the way to think of it is it's building your core IT capabilities and core IT skills. Regardless of what area you work in, you're going to have to have basic IT ability. We're having this webinar online, all right? Um, in future, you're gonna be required to do presentations, you're gonna be required to do spreadsheets, you're gonna be required to do word processing, regardless of what field you're in. So you can't really go into a job in the future and say, oh, I don't know how to do a presentation on PowerPoint. It's not good enough, all right? So we have to build those skills as well, and that's why this unit exists. Again, really cool assessments in this unit. Um, students go through things like building websites, um, to blogs, lots of other things. Okay, and like I said, the other, the last unit I would recommend is essential mathematics. So this is not at the moment a core unit, but it will be a core unit in the foundation program moving forward. So it's better if you've done it because it's a core capability or basic capability that you need to have regardless of the field you go into. And this unit looks at basic arithmetic statistics, algebra, functions, and, their gra and graphs, and trying to um, describe or analyze graphs. Um, so, you know, you should be able to do well in this unit. Okay, and the last one, like I said, this is a zero credit point unit. So it actually won't cost you any money. It's a free unit, but it's a unit that you must complete, is an academic integrity unit. And the reason why this unit exists is to make sure that you are aware of the reasons for um, academic integrity, why we are required to, to exhibit academic integrity, and develop skills in order to make sure that your work, your assessments meet our requirements, Deakin College's requirements, and Deakin University's requirements. Okay, um, So you'll develop skills around paraphrasing, citing, referencing, and how to avoid breaching academic integrity. Like I said, this is probably a four hour unit that you can do over the weekend, but it's something that you know you should probably do sooner rather than later, get it done. And that way going into your assignments, you know how to make sure you submit a quality assignment. For the extended students, there are three other required units. Like I said, those three core units, um, as well as essential maths and the academic integrity unit. So I won't go through those, two, but I'll go through the other three that you're required to do. So the first one is introduction to academic communication. So really it's a precursor or a prerequisite to the, to the advanced academic communication unit that students have to do, all right? So really you're developing skills. Um, this is like a, if you kind of want to look at the advanced one as like the, year 12 equivalent unit, this is probably like a end of year 11 unit in that the, the skills that you're working on here will really prepare you to do well in the advanced academic writing uh, communication unit, okay? Um, you're looking at similar kinds of things, but the difficulty is a little bit lower because it is part of our extended program. So those of you who are offered the extended program, you have a shot at the intro one before you go into the advanced one so you can make sure you do well in the advanced one. Thanks, Dan. Same for introduction to academic writing. So the kinds of skills you're developing in introduction to academic writing 
might be more general, things like paraphrasing, summarizing, whereas when you go into your advanced academic writing, you're really going to be looking at the higher level um, writing skills. So whether that's, you know, um, writing analysis or discussion versus paraphrasing an article. So that's the kind of difference between them. Again, it's a prerequisite. It's a, um, a step into advanced academic writing. Thanks. And the last one, which again, you'll be required to do as an extended student is computing skills or computer skills. It's an introductory unit in computing and information technology. Um, it looks at different things to IT in that it looks at um, a bit more of hardware as well as um, processes. So you will learn things like, um, you know, the various peripherals that you have in your computer um, and why we have those and how they work before you go into FNDS 015, which is information technology. And you're kind of expected to know all of those things to begin. Okay. Um, so it's also a very useful unit, which will prepare you for success in IT. Thanks. All right. So moving on, um, I've just got some frequently asked questions here, which we've received from students in the past. And I'm just going to clarify some of those. If you have any questions that arise as a result of this, just pop them into the chat and I'll try and answer them afterwards. Okay. First question I get is, how do I purchase textbooks? That's a brilliant question, especially because you're not in Australia. Um, a lot, of, thanks Cyrus, a lot of you um, might be available in other places, uh, might be located in other places, and you might be worried about how you can get a course textbook in Indonesia or in China or in um, Kenya, for example. The, the best thing is that we've made all of these resources available through Moodle. So, I think in, in the foundation program, most units do not even require a purchase of the textbook. All right, your teachers have done all of the hard work. They've collected various sources of information and they've put together a unique course offering for you. In some units, you do need to get a textbook or, or, or an online resource. And for that, we've got an ebook link or an ebook resource link available on our unit Moodle sites. All right, so in those subjects, your teachers will tell you about it. You can go online, you can purchase the textbook online, and you'll have access to the textbook and other learning materials. Okay? So you don't need to worry about getting a physical textbook. Second question, are the classes recorded? Yes. So one class in each unit is recorded every week, but it's only made available to students in the following week. Why? We want to make sure the students go to their classes, so that they can address issues when it comes up. But let's say you have issues on one day and you're not able to get into your class or you know, you're sick and you miss your class, um, you're not at a disadvantage because you can catch up on the content in the following week, meet your teachers during a consultation and ask as many questions as you want to clarify those issues. All right, so they are recorded mainly for revision and also for catch up purposes. The third question, um, what programs or equipment will I need to complete my studies? The first one and the second one are probably the two most important uh, resources or equipment that you need. The first one is a working computer, whether that's a laptop, a desktop, or a tablet. Now guys, I've written iPad here, but in a lot of different settings, the iPad does not work as well as a, as a laptop or a standard desktop. All right, if you have a MacBook, works better than an iPad. All right, just because the Zoom app doesn't work as well in the iPad as it does in, in the classroom as your, as your um, laptops or desktops. You also need a working webcam. That's very important. Okay, when you go into a classroom, you like to see the other students that are there. We don't like to see just black backgrounds. We don't like to see avatars or images. We don't like to see, you know, just a, a plain text with your name on it, we want to be able to see your faces. All right, so just like you would be in a classroom with your teacher, seeing them face to face and your other students face to face, you need to have a working webcam that allows you to do that. All right, so that's important. Apart from that, I would suggest that you have headphones 
and a working microphone. The reason for that is, you know, you might be in a house where uh, it's distracting. You can hear music, you can hear other people watching TV. And that way, if you've got headphones, you can kind of focus on your, on your study. And a microphone helps, but you don't have to have a separate one. You can use your computer or laptop mic. And the last thing is a access to a quiet or private place. Now, this is important. Um, if you have your own room, that's great. If you don't, maybe somewhere that you can go into your house where nobody else can disturb you. Now, think about things like doing your tests and exams. You want to be able to sit in a place where you're not going to get interrupted or disturbed. Okay, so that is an important requirement. Thanks, Dan. Okay. The other questions that we get, what does my timetable look like? Now, our general timetable at Deakin College runs from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., all right? And this is purely to help students who are studying online because of time differences and things like that. We schedule our classes between 11 and 9. Now, the foundation program, um, we're hoping to make sure that our classes will run between 1, uh, after 1 p.m. Melbourne time, and towards the evening, all right? That's because all of our students are overseas, which means that you guys don't have to wake up super early in the morning to access your classes, that the times that you wake up are suitable for you, um, and that you're still able to go to your class and engage with other students from around the world. Um, you will get your timetable once you've enrolled in your classes. That's where you'll be able to see your actual working timetable. How many students are in my class? For foundation, the maximum number of students in the class is 25, all right? We don't have big lectures where there are 100 or 200 students. Um, we don't have big seminars with 50, 60 students. We have smaller tutorials, classrooms that you're used to, like when you're in school maybe, with 25 students maximum, okay? And the last question is when do I enroll? So enrollments, will be open from early to mid-October. Um, all students who have accepted their place will receive an email regarding how to enroll. So that'll go through your course outline, that'll go through step-by-step -step how to make sure that you complete your enrollment. Um, you can enroll on your own, or I'll be doing a session a little bit later, um, in a few weeks' time, which shows students how to enroll um, and, and goes through it step-by-step. -step. So if you want to come to that, you're more than welcome to come to that and we can go through it together, okay? All right, I think that's it for me. Um, there are a few questions that I've seen posted in, in the chat. Dan, do you want me to go through them or? Yeah, sure, I've just got one more uh, page of questions there for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> a few more FAQs. Um, what happens in my first class? Um, so, Usually in your first class of the trimester, this is where um, your teacher will familiarize you with your learning environment. So you'll automatically receive a link um, to join the class on your Moodle site. You'll be able to see that, just you, remember? Um, and once you go into that, your teacher will discuss the assessments, um, they'll discuss um, the topics that you're gonna cover each week. So that first class is really important. Um, the first couple of classes are really important to make sure that you're on the right track for the rest of the trimester. Um, okay, what if I fail a unit? This isn't really like a, my favorite question in that a lot of students think about this, but you know, um, I hope that the program's designed in a way where you really shouldn't be failing any units. But if you fail a unit, you can repeat core units in the following trimester. The only difficulty is with some electives because the electives don't run each trimester. Some electives run in trimester one and they don't run in trimester two, or they run in trimester two and not in trimester three. Okay, so that's the, the only thing. So you might not be able to get into your favorite electives, but the core units will run each trimester. What is the structure of trimester three? So for trimester three, we will have 12 weeks of teaching and one week of self-directed learning plus an exam week. All right, so if you want to have a look at that um, course timetable, you can see that week one starts on the 1st of October um, and goes all the way until week nine. Um, goes all the way until week nine. And you can see week nine kind of cuts off in December where we close down for um, the Christmas and New Year's period. 
and then we open up again in January. 6th of Jan will be your first day of classes in the next year, um, and that will be a continuation of week 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, and your exams will be held in February. So I would make sure that you guys get a copy of this calendar um, and just start taking note of when your assessments are due, but also, you know, make sure you take note of the days that you need to be available for class. Beautiful. Sorry, I'm just going to correct you there, Chanel. Week one actually starts on the 26th of October. Oh, sorry. I looked at the, the one. one. Just beside the October there. So not until the very last week of October. So you still have lots of time uh, to accept your offer, confirm your place, and then enrollment will open up uh, the first week or second week of October, and then you'll still have some time before your classes will commence. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Okay, um, questions. Chanel, do you want to answer this question that I've asked to answer live? It's around the transition from the foundation to the bachelor. Yep. Depend on the two English units. Yep. Um, and the second part to that would be, can a student move to the bachelor course even if they hold a foundation to diploma? Okay. So good question. Um, the, to answer the first question, does the transition from foundation to bachelor depend on the English score? Yes. Okay. Um, you can have an average of 90, but if you miss the English entry requirements, like if the course has a, a requirement of getting 75 in FNDS 013 and 75 in FNDS 016, and the student gets a 70, they're not going to get into Deakin Uni. Okay, they're not going to get into that particular bachelor. So they'll have to think about another, another course. Um, and the reason for that is we want to make sure that the students who are going straight into the, the bachelor program are able to, you know, work with the other students that are there and be able to thrive in that environment. So there is a hard limit, a hard requirement on meeting those English language scores. So yes. Um, the second question, can a student move to bachelor course from foundation later, even if they hold a foundation to diploma course? Yes. Um, so yes, they can. They, they could have an offer that goes foundation to the diploma, but then they do well enough in their, um, they do well enough in their English units as well as their average marks. They can, they can change course and go into a different bachelor or they can jump into their side bachelor instead of going through a diploma. So either is fine. Beautiful. And I'll just extend to that, Chanel, that if a student doesn't meet um, those, uh, the 70 or 75 in the communication units, but then um, meets the overall wham, I guess, to go to first year bachelor, they can take um, the IELTS the test, test or an IELTS test, yeah. At Deakin um, to meet the English requirements. So there is, I guess, a backup to that. There's just been another question come in regarding um, do we accept your lingo test? The answer is yes. Um, and can you still apply in October if you're yet uh, to meet the English requirements? So I guess I can break that up into two parts. Um, if a student doesn't meet the English language requirement for foundation, we do have the um, Deakin Uni English Language Institute or known as Julie, where students can study um, Alicos prior to undertaking the foundation program. Um, and if a student is yet to uh, take their IELTS, they can still apply for an offer letter um, and it will just be conditional on them meeting the entry requirement or taking an English um, proficiency test prior to accepting the offer. Um, so Hans asked, is essential mathematics mandatory? Um, it's not a mandatory unit at the moment, but I would strongly suggest that students do it. Um, the main reason, like I said, is regardless of the field you go into, having that basic maths ability is really important. Um, so yeah, I would, if a student met with me and asked, should I study it? My answer would be yes, but it's not a required unit. It won't, not doing essential maths won't stop you from completing the foundation program. Um, okay, I've got a student saying, will I be able to study a biomedical science bachelor course as to enter med school in the future? I think that's something you'd have to check with Deakin University. Um, 
And sorry, I'm just going to answer that for you, Chanel, because I thought it's not your area here. Um, so our pathways for biomedical science uh, from our foundation, you can either transition to a diploma of science or a diploma of health science. Um, from there, both of those diploma programs will lead you into second year of the biomedical science. Um, and then on completion of biomedical science, that's when you'll uh, be able to apply for a postgraduate um, to enter into the field of medicine. Thanks, Dan. You can also go straight to biomed from foundation. There is an entry pathway there. So if you get your average marks, I think it's above um, 70 and then English above 65, you should be able to jump straight into first year biomed as well. I will just make a note about medicine for those students who are looking uh, to get into medicine. Um, Deakin University is actually the only university in Victoria which doesn't require a Bachelor of Biomedical Science to get into their postgrad of medicine. So um, if you are studying biomedical science, you can apply for, I guess, several universities. But if you're looking to study um, medicine at Deakin, you, you don't necessarily have to take the biomedical science. Any other questions? Anything else? Um, we'll just allow a couple more minutes um, yeah. to go through those. For everyone that is on the call today, you will receive a copy of Chanel's presentation as well as a link to this recording. Um, and we will also include a link to our foundation course. So if you do have any further questions, please feel free to contact myself. Um, and if it is course related, I will forward that on to Chanel for you. Um, but we have just had a couple of questions pop in, Chanel. Um, yep. In regard to how will exams be conducted? Yeah, so um, I think I covered this in the slides, but the exams are conducted in different ways for different units. So for some units, we'll have um, a instead of having a final exam, some units have changed their design of the, of the course so that there is a final um, assessment that the students will complete, which runs into the exam period. Um, there are other units that have a take home paper, which is basically a much harder exam that you have to complete over a couple of days rather than within a, a slotted time frame. There are other units that have papers where students will have um, about four hours to complete their exam, download paper, complete it and upload it. This is in the case of maths exams. Um, but most of our exams have been moved into an online quiz format where you can basically complete the whole exam in two hours within a specified time slot. So just from home. Sure. Um, so do you recommend taking the Diploma of Science first, entering second year biomed or directly entering first year? That's a good question. It, it kind of depends on you. I would usually suggest that students go through the diploma just because you're better supported. Um, Catherine's a fantastic um, academic coordinator. Um, and whilst you're here, you'd be able to meet her. I, I run sessions every trimester where students who are interested in going into nursing or other um, you know, health and science related areas can drop in um, and you can meet her then. And basically she can talk about how the units you take in the diploma will allow you to get into your course at uni um, will we'll prepare you for the second year at uni. Um, and I would suggest you go through the diploma just because you get you know, more focus and attention from the teachers. Um, you get to know your, the other students who are going into the same um, degree as you and you build much better connections and, and you can ask as many questions as you want and get a lot of help. So I would suggest that you go through the diploma, but it's up to you. We've just had one question come through in regards to the English placement test. Iris, I actually am familiar with your agent, so I'll contact her to arrange um, that test to be made. Ah, the big one. Am I at a disadvantage by studying online? Do you know what? I'm going to put in a personal note before I hand it over to Chanel. Um, I actually completed my undergraduate at Deakin University solely online. Um, and I guess 
pre-COVID, um, a lot of what Deakin did was already online. So um, the student portal that Chanel showed you, that already existed. Um, and all of your assignments, all of your course material was already, um, I guess, put in there. Um, so that, that was already how we worked. And for Deakin University, they've got almost 40 years experience in distant learning and online learning. So Deakin University is actually ranked number one in Australia for their online platform and eighth globally. So um, when COVID came in, uh, Deakin University already had almost 16,000 students online already in their own online campus or cloud campus. Um, so really transitioning face to face to online was something that Deakin was very agile in doing because we already had these systems in place. So we're aware that online can be a bit um, of a fear point, I guess, because um, a lot of institutions have had to start, um, I guess, makeshift um, platforms to be able to deliver online. Deakin was not in that position. Um, if anything, I think that you're at an advantage for studying online in the fact that um, if you attend class, you still have that ability to ask questions and be interactive. But then if you uh, have an assignment and you're not quite sure of a particular topic, you've got the advantage of going back and watching the recording. So not just relying on your notes and same for exam preparation. You can go back and watch all of your lectures um, prior to attending the exam. So when you say, are you at a disadvantage of studying online? In my experience, studying online and having that access to all of your resources in one place and recordings is actually an advantage um, of, of, of studying. So that's my personal input um, from my own online experience, um, but I'll let Chanel give his from an academic side of view. Thanks, Dan. I think that's a really good point that you raised. And just so that all of you are aware, before I was working at Deakin, I, I worked at Monash and we actually had trainings where staff from Deakin would come and talk to us about how they're running their online courses. So, you know, just to just to add to that, it's kind of like you're, you're in the space where there are experts. Um, so that's good for you. Um, in terms of like the foundation program, I actually think you're better supported studying online, even more so than you would be if you were studying face to face. Why? Because we know that it's different. And because we know that it's different, we provide you with even more help, probably more help than you need. All right. There are many students who will say, oh, I don't need to do this. I've already got the concept. I've already got it down. But we've got so much help available. All of your class teachers offer consultation times outside of the classroom. So you can actually meet with them outside of the classroom one on one and check um, anything that you're not sure of. All right. We have um, drop-in sessions. You can meet myself. You can meet um, student mentors. Um, all of these things are still facilitated. And the only difference to that question is where you sit, all right? In the face-to-face -face setting, you're sitting at a classroom in Burwood or at Waterfront. Here, you're sitting at home. But everything else that you're engaging with, everything else that you're working with is identical and has been changed to make the online learning experience much better. All right, so I actually agree with Dan. I think you're at an advantage because, you know, it's, it's unlikely that if we were studying face-to-face -face, that you could meet with your teacher at 6.30 in the evening, all right, for a drop-in session. Whereas now these kinds of things are available and same for the time difference, right? Like the fact that our timetable runs from the afternoon to late at night is to accommodate you, your, your distance. And what that means is you might have classes at you know, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., whereas when we're on campus, your earliest class start is 8.30. And for some students, they're like, I can't wake up at 8.30 and get to class. And my answer is usually too bad, so sad, right? But the fact that, you know, in an online setting, the fact that we've pushed our timetable back so that it's, it's more beneficial for you means that you're not gonna have to wake up at um, early in the morning to, to get to your classes, okay? Anything else? I do have one more question for you. So in regards to the class timetable, you've said it runs from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., but how much class time per unit is required? Yep, good question. Um, so for each, each unit in the foundation program, you have four face-to-face -face contact hours per week. Um, the reason why I didn't go through all of this is because once you um, basically enroll, we will go through all of these in our 
or orientation sessions that we do. Um, but you have four contact hours per unit per week. So that's two two hour classes. All right. So if you're taking a full study load, it basically means that you have four units. All right. And for each of those four units, you have four hours. So you have 16 contact hours face to face of scheduled class time. Apart from that, you can meet your teachers in consultation times and all of these other um, drop in sessions and things that are available. OK. So you can spread those out. Um, once you get into enrollment, I would suggest that, you know, if, if you um, are choosing your subjects that you go and do that as soon as you can, because it is a first come first serve for enrollment. So, you know, if you want a good timetable, get in there nice and quick and choose your classes so that you can get a timetable that works well for you. Um, and you should be able to spread those classes across three to four days of the week or five, if you like that. Amazing. Well, there hasn't been any new questions pop through, so we might just wrap it up there. Um, and for anyone, if they do think of a question afterwards, please feel free to contact us via email. Um, we're always here for you. So um, thank you so much, Chanel, and thank you to everyone who participated today. Um, as I said, you will receive a copy of both the presentation and the recording. Thanks, everyone. I hope to see you all in class or during orientation. Bye.